Well, if you even go back to the first trucks, 769, 773, when you think about it, we use a mild steel frame with lots of castings. We did that in the 60s. We use nitrogen over oil suspension. We still use that today. We use a CAT system, a CAT power system, it's designed and built by Caterpillar from one end to the other. We use oil cooled disc brakes back then. We use oil cooled disc brakes today. Now they're different and they're better, but I think carrying that philosophy for close to 45, 50 years now says a great deal. We're not jumping around, we're sticking with things we know. We do it very well, better than anybody else in the world. I can't think of a better, uh, better job to have right now than to be engaged in this truck development program. We usually have one machine at a time that comes out. Here we're changing six to seven machines in one shot, and that is incredible. This program represents an investment of about $200 million. That is a very significant investment, even in Caterpillar terms. These pits are getting deeper, halls are getting longer, energy is becoming more expensive as a proportion of your total cost, and I think the F-Series uh, addresses a lot of these things. So we were out there working with our customers, understanding what our customers want in a mining truck, not a mechanical drive mining truck or an electric drive mining truck, but a mining truck, period. We undertook a voice of the customer survey unlike any we've ever done before. Uh, we went out to uh, 130, 140 different individual customers around the world, 70 different operations. Uh, virtually every mining district in the world was covered. We've also done a great job of bringing customers in. I know that's tough for them to take their time off. They're busy uh, to fly out and meet with our engineers here at the factory. But we've had some great sessions with them here in the factory or out at our proving grounds where they've pointed out stuff from the prototype. It's been very beneficial. And we brought in customers to interview them right here in the plant. We took a, through them a virtual audit. We showed them a machine and then a 3D virtual atmosphere. With the tools that we have today, we can start with basic drawings and lead eventually all the way to virtual reality 3D studies of the product with our customers so that they can experience the product before the product exists in iron. We took mine truck operators, Caterpillar flew them down to Tucson to put them in the new prototype cab and you can see their face look around, you can see them look at something and be, look at it disapprovingly. And you can't score that, but you can get a you know you can get an impression of it. We videotaped that particular voice of the customer session and played those tapes back to all the engineers and let them see how the, the operators were behaving. I've had several projects where our customers have been the ones to identify our fix. Um, we've had several where they are a direct part of our team, and we are communicating with them regularly to get their information, their perspective. It also really instills a lot more sense of pride and ownership in the engineers. They always have had that in designing something, but now they, they have a tie even more so to what the customer is going to be doing with the product, and that, that goes a long way. But the biggest thing is you develop such relationship with these people in the field and the customer that you don't want to let them down, and you want to do the right things for them so they can, they can run their business. This generation of trucks is going to be the most advanced generation of trucks Caterpillar's ever developed. It's going to have the best interpretation of what the customer wants. It's going to add tremendous value. The biggest thing is just the scope of changes and the technology we're really putting in these trucks uh, to take them to the next level. Across our range, we are uh, coming out with higher horsepower versions for each truck. Uh, the uh, 793 is up from 2415 horsepower to 2650 and our uh, 797F will go from 3550 horsepower to 4000, so it will be the highest power truck that we have. We know some of the areas or concerns that customers have today with electric drive trucks, and we wanted to make sure that we can design those out completely. We were able to put together what I'm absolutely convinced is the, the world's premier electric drive team as a result of combining our internal resources with industry-known experts. Caterpillar decided they're going to integrate the entire line of AC drive from, from bumper to bumper. So essentially you're dealing with one person, that's the dealer. I went and visited a customer of ours, one of our field development uh, partners, and um, the maintenance manager came up to me after we gave the presentation and he said, 
you do not realize the benefit that you will provide as a Caterpillar AC drive truck by having it single sourced and having a dealer support it by itself and not having to deal with the heartache of having to deal with three different manufacturers. So we'll be able to supplement uh, with our customers the option of a mechanical or electric depending on that application. So that's uh, the big benefit of having all these new models of trucks. When you think about the mining customer that's out there, they are really at the forefront when it comes to health and safety of their employees. They are very diligent about making sure that their employees get home safely every single day. Our role really is to come alongside them and partner with them by providing the safest equipment possible. When I first walked around the F-Series truck line, I really just smiled as I was walking through the trucks and, and taking a look at it, because I could see that the engineers were listening to what the customer was saying. I could see it in, in some of the solutions that they've come up with. It is our goal to provide the safest equipment to operate and maintain that's available in the marketplace. Uh, that is from our chairman on down through uh, the organization. The operator's life is in my hands, and it makes me feel that just to take your time so that guy goes home, to his family just the same way I would to, you know, on my family. I'm particularly proud of the way that the teams come together and been able to design the truck so that all the service points are down at ground level access. So we try to avoid having your common maintenance and service items have to get uh, the man stretching or trying to come up with some sort of ladder or something to get to it. So that's a big improvement. Uh, that was actually the first Six Sigma project we ran uh, back three or four years ago was to understand serviceability and how we can make improvements in the area of service. And then when we look to uh, the larger maintenance tasks like accessing cylinder heads, the entire top of the engine has been cleared off and made accessible without having to remove other components. We ran a very detailed analysis on the optimum horsepower that was required and the new engine platform that allowed us to uh, achieve that optimum horsepower for the overall best performance and cost per ton. Well, the C-175 is designed specifically to comply with the U.S. EPA Tier 2 emissions, but it has the capability to extend into the future and meet the next step of emissions, which are, of course, lower. Emissions are a much bigger story today than they were 25 years ago. So the capability that we have with the new engines that will be in these F-Series will help us stay ahead of the curve on, on emissions. We're very confident uh, in the C-175. We build it for a very long life, and what we've been able to do is we're able to demonstrate that life in our field program, and we have over 60,000 hours of field hours, and we'll be well over uh, 80,000 hours by the time we get to our first production. Every operator likes, to, likes their truck to go a little bit faster than the guy next to them, and so the field follow trucks, um, they take great pride in the fact that they're driving around in the fastest truck in the fleet. While we're introducing the C-175, we're going to continue to improve upon the proven product that we have with the 3500 engine. I think one misconception that's out there is that the C-175 is going to replace the 3500 engine, and the reality is it's not. 3500 product, we've got a lot of plans for. It's not going away. We are obviously able to meet Tier 2 emissions and moving forward and to, to Tier 4 eventually. So uh, this it, it's going to be a legacy product that's going to be out there for quite some time and will be continuing to provide service to customers. The team came back with a design recommendation based on what customers had said. I thought it was wrong, but um, I I decided to go along with the team's uh, opinion on it and was very, very pleased to have the team prove me wrong when we actually showed the final design to the customers. And that's terrific. It shows that the process works. We all take a lot of pride in our work. We all work really hard, long hours, um, something goes wrong, uh, we're, we're in here working the weekend, get to know the cleaning crew at night very well. We have engineers working round the clock to give them quality designs following our process. And we have all these processes in place which the customer will absolutely not know. And essentially these processes are going to give them a good product at the end of the day. 
We've got all the tools. We've got trucks running at the proving ground. We've got simulators in the lab. We've got a full electric drivetrain sitting in a lab that we can run development tests on. This simulator, as far as we know, is one of its kind as far as the completeness. It's got the entire drivetrain from the engine um, to where it meets with the final drives. So we can run a test, uh, see how our powertrain is performing, make whatever changes we need to either the hardware or control software, come back and repeat the test and know that the differences we're seeing are because of the things we wanted to change and not because environmental conditions changed. You know, it's kind of fun to, to say we, we've got big stuff and we break it. But uh, the truth is we're looking for the weakest point and we're, we want to find that point before the customers do. Um, break it, break it in the same way that it might happen in the field and get it fixed. As we're sending our pilot trucks uh, out to the field, we're sending engineers to the pilot sites to see the mine operations, to talk with the customers, talk with the service technicians. We'll take it through our structures course, which is comprised of uh, ditches, uh, V-ditches, uh, metal ditches, oscillation holes, and washboards. And we'll take it through there, usually uh, first, you know, maybe five, six, seven miles an hour, and that's enough. Pretty wild ride if you're in the cab as well. Uh, <laughs> pretty rough. And so the tests that we run and the things that we do out here are all to make sure that our product is going to meet our customers' expectations. But at the end of the day, we really are focused on quality. So when this truck goes to the field, we have validated as many of the systems as we possibly can in the time frame we've been given. So um, really working on the reliability and making sure that the truck performs as promised. The first time that we started up the, uh, the first pilot truck that's out at TPG, I mean, I was so excited. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. They, I guess they don't get as excited about it as we do, but. Um, it's, it's our truck, it's our baby. If we take a look at the customer when he buys a piece of mining equipment, the capital investment is, is very substantial in the beginning. But if we look at the life cycle and the cost and the productivity of that equipment, uh, the real value comes in how that equipment is supported. When it comes to supporting that truck, there's only one call that our customer has to make, and that's to a cap dealer. They're capable of quickly identifying an issue and solving that problem and getting the truck back to work. We built on that with the F-Series, including electric drive, where the, all of the components, whether they be mechanical drive or electric drive, will be serviced by the Caterpillar dealer. The investment never stops. As a dealership, that investment is in people. That investment is in in training, it's in software, it's in tooling, it's in parts, components, and it's in facilities. And it continues to grow, and it continues to change. We do not want to go out and overburden ourselves uh, right from the get-go. So we need to make sure that we have a very disciplined approach in how we introduce these machines. We still feel that um, a conservative approach with a phased introduction to make sure that we have all of the product support in place and we have resolved any unexpected problems in the field is the better path to take. I think what that should say to customers is Caterpillar is making the investments to maintain its technology leadership and provide the solutions both in terms of technology and support necessary to maintain the value they've always expected from Caterpillar. When your passion is mining equipment, to have a full revamp of your product line in addition to brand new product, um, there is nowhere else in the world where this is happening. There's nothing else that I would rather do in the world than work on big iron. Being on the leading edge of what Caterpillar is doing is, is what drives you uh, to do your best and come to work you know, and, and want to be here. When I was a little boy, this is my dream, so here I am, they actually pay me to do this job. It's just an overwhelming experience and sense of pride that is um, second to none. I mean, as far as work career goes, it's, it's an overwhelming feeling. You've got everybody on one team that's extremely passionate about what they do. To produce this new machine, all this whole series of machines, in record time, and the effort that's put in, that's just humbling, and that's what keeps me going. I love to actually see the truck. 
and to see the truck run and know that we did that. Like as a team, we did that. Each piece has to be perfect to make the whole puzzle fit together. And I'm one piece of, of a big puzzle. When all of us get together and put our minds to it, um, we come up with great products. Having been in it from day one till now and seen the growth and what we've done, that's been, uh, that's been very meaningful to me to be a part of that.